Hey, hey, what's up, guys and gals? It's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose, back with another edition of Giant Machines 2017. So a lot of you guys watched that first video where we introduced you to this game uh, using the shovel, wheel, bucket, whatever the excavator was, uh, and a lot of you guys were into it. Um, so today we're going to continue on and we're going to do a little crane work using uh, one of the largest cranes in the world or one of the largest mobile cranes in the world, which should be really, really cool. I'm looking forward to uh, playing with this. After each workday, the silicone containers must be properly stored. All right. We use the mobile crane to move the containers. Park the machine in the designated area. As always, you can use the Thug ZM tow to get to the machine park faster. All right, so I'm going to be using mouse and keyboard pretty much for most of this today. Um, I do have my PS3 controller hooked up just for a little bit of driving, but for the most part, I'll use the, uh, the mouse and keyboard for this. So enter gets us into this. And again, we hit control and that'll show us our controls. And again, the controls are pretty basic, not a whole lot to them. X starts the engine, space bar releases the handbrake. P turns off the radio because I don't need that. And um, yeah, mouse and keyboard, not the most fun for driving. I will state that. Um, that's the reason that my PS3 controller hooked up um, is specifically for the driving. Uh, but I am I'm going to try to keyboard and mouse it a little bit. It's not too terrible. So I can't imagine driving the uh, the dump truck this way. Uh, but he can get by with it. Just a little tap tap. So yeah, anyways, appreciate all the comments, all the views that we got on the first video in this series. Seems to be a quite a bit of interest in it. I mean, why wouldn't there be? I mean, big, huge machines. I mean, as kids, we all dreamed about playing with these things. Um, you'd look at cranes and stuff like that and you'd think, man, I'd love to operate that. The guy who was all the way up at like those tower cranes, you'd be like, I'd love to be that guy. I wouldn't want to climb up there every day, but I'd love to be that guy. Uh, you know. Anyway, so let's get in the vehicle here. And actually, let's get out of the vehicle. First things first. Let's take a look at it. This is uh one of the largest cranes in the world. Pretty darn cool. Hmm. That hook should be attached to the front of that truck. It shouldn't be just floating there. That should be attached to there for stability. Huh. All right. Looks pretty cool, though. I mean, graphics aren't terrible as far as the modeling goes. They do a pretty good job with it. I mean, they're not amazing, but they're still pretty darn good. There's your cockpit that you actually control from. This thing's pretty cool. It actually will swing out and, uh, and around to get into position. It's neat the way it's tucked up under there like that. Uh, let's see. Anything else? I mean, I like it. I think it's pretty darn neat. There's your jack set up in there. That's kind of cool. All right, now we can get in it and do some driving. I just had to take a look around. Cockpit interior of the cab. It's not that amazing. You do have an ice cold drink there with some ice cubes in it. That's always good. All right, fire up the engine. Same controls as before. And again, I'll turn off the radio. And we'll release that parking brake and we'll get going. So we got to drive up here to uh, 190 meters. And I guess that's where our job site is. Oops, I think I might have clipped the fence there a little bit. Yeah, keyboard steering, not very impressive.
All right. See if we can get this lined up a little bit. Pull in here. Now I'm going to try to do first person as much as possible, though there are like overhead cam views so you can see what you're doing and um, and do a little bit better job of steering and placement. Uh, but for the most part today on this, I'm going to try to do primarily first person. Alright, so when you get in the right place, you get the little hourglass little clock thing. Get into the operator cabin of the mobile crane. And then Holy Tex spread. talks to you and tells you what to do. So, thank you, Tex. Alright, so we're going to set our parking brake, turn our engine off, and exit the cab. And then we'll go back here. Now, this is really cool, I think. They've got the uh, the actual plates here, or weight distribution pads. I've always, in Construction Simulator, I always wished they had these. Where you actually had to place these into position and then bring out your stabilizer arm and jacks. Because that those little jacks right there, that's too much pressure per square inch. And it would, you know, puncture a hole through whatever you were working with or damage whatever ground and that's what these are for these pads are solid steel in most places or they're really huge uh, timber frames at, that are placed on the ground and they disperse the weight over a larger area and I've always wished that those were in construction simulator but they're not and uh, but at least they have them in this one and you would absolutely have to have these with this crane all right, so we're going to go up in here like a soul, enter into the cockpit here that we'll be controlling from. Got a little sat phone there, our radio, not sure what this is, probably a display. Got our joysticks. I wish that the, uh, the controls were more defined in this so that I could use dual joysticks on this, but unfortunately not. And we'll be using just the mouse and keyboard for it. So yeah, you start it up and it gives you cabin operator, the mode is folded, unfold, controls, E exits, X engine, um, unfold and fold, that's what we're looking for, T to unfold. And I am going to go third person on this because I want to watch the animation on this because it's pretty darn cool. So the cab unfolds out and then it turns into like a carny ride. And you go up and around to get you into place into an elevated position. And then our stabilizers come out. And then spread out and then we'll jacket her up. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We almost got centered in the uh, in the pads. Now you can use the crane to move the four containers to the Rock on. All right, so now we got to use the crane. This will be fun. So let's look at our crane controls. G folds. A and D will rotate left and right. W, S is jib up and down. R and F fold the jib. So G is that. We don't want to use G. Uh, so we want to re-T again. So we want to jib up a little bit, bring it on up, and then we want to, uh, let's see, unfold the jib, so we're going to go R, and at the same time I probably want to do left mouse button so that my hook comes down a little bit, otherwise it'd be pinching. Oh, look at that. That's super sweet. Nice. Rise, rise, little beast. Rise into the air. All right, so let's start lowering that hook down. I think we're all jibbed out. No, we still got to jib out a little bit more. Get her jibbed all the way out. Holy cow, that thing can jib out some, can't it?
It's still going. This thing's massive. Oh, wait. We finally reached our end. Wow, look at how big that is. That's amazing. Very cool. Holy cow. That thing's got some elevation on it. All right, so I want to do like a, you do have a jib, uh, like a boom cam and a hook cam here, and you can wheel in with your, oh wait, let me do that again. You can wheel in with your mouse, uh, middle mouse wheel to get as close to it or as far away as you need to be. But I want to, uh, like I said, I want to run most of this in cab for that first person uh, complete uh, immersion thing. So I'm going to do that most of the time with this. Hope you guys don't mind. I will do some third person. So let's go ahead and hook up here on our first container. And the basics of this job is we got to get the container from the right and move it over to the stack on the left. So that's what we'll be doing here. So let's get sort of centered up on the container here. And we'll go ahead and hook down. Bringing that hook all the way down. Takes a while. All right, so now we can start to get it over the uh, the actual container here. Get it in the spot. It has to be centered up on that little gray box. And it has to be the distance right. So we're a little bit we're a little bit too far out, so I'm going to raise the boom up a little bit. And then I'm going to lower the hook back down and see if that's got us any closer. Hmm. Let's go over a little bit to the... Oh! There we are! Oh, we're really close here. Hmm. What do we got to do to get this to work? Come back to the right a little bit. I see us dancing around up there. Seems like we need to come Hmm It seems like we need to come this direction Yeah Get on it Maybe we need to raise up a little bit So close. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe we're too shallow on it. Oh, I'm gonna have to hook Cam and look so I can figure this out. Oh yeah, we're way too shallow. Oops. Alright, so we just need to lower the boom down, raise that hook up a little bit, raise, low, raise, lower. If that was too much. Oh, we're hooked. We're hooked up. We got it. Missed the whole hooking process. Oh, well. All right. Raise her up. Get that load up in the air a little bit. So we clear the water towers there. I don't want to hit them. And then we'll rotate the entire thing over here to the left. And we'll see if we can put the load in place. So this first box is going on this front right hand corner here so i'm thinking we probably really need to bring that load to us a little bit so to do so i'm going to uh i'm going to uh raise the boom and then i'll uh swing over a little bit more so to bring the load to you, you raise the boom. To push it away from you, you lower the boom. I don't think you mess with the jib as far as folding and unfolding it. 
uh, once you have it folded out. I don't think you do that. I think you pretty much adjust and compensate by uh, by raising and lowering the boom. I wouldn't think you would do the jib. Now, I could be completely wrong. I am by no means a crane expert. Ooh, we're not even close to being near us. So let's raise that boom way up. Oh, yep, still not where we can clear it. Now we should be able to clear it. Uh-oh, got a problem. Our load is turning. We got to get it in here. Now, here's the other thing. You don't have rotation on this. Um, so I'm in trouble now. Ugh. Hate when this happened. There are no rotation commands on this, so the only way you really can rotate the load is by pinching it up against another container and then using the leverage to uh, to get it to rotate. So we're going to have to swing over here a little bit. Have to be smart about this. Let that swing back in some. I'm gonna have to raise this up a little bit. Lower it down some. And push it away from me. So I can put the container up against the other containers and make it rotate some. So raise that up a little bit more. And then bring it left. And I should just tap that container there. And hopefully by continuing to put pressure on it, it swung. Oh, this is not good. All right, stop spinning. All right, so raise her up and bring it towards me. Oh, this is not good. Oh, that's not good. Somebody be getting killed about right now. I'm just saying. All right, so I'm pulling it towards me soon. Uh, and then I'll lower it back down. I should be at this point able to come to the left. The back end should clear. And we can start getting this thing in there. All right, so raise her up. Lower the boom. So I can start pushing it into that gap. Okay. Starting to get into the gap some. Raise it and lower. And there we go. That was uh that was way dirty and nasty. Hopefully we can do better on the next attempt because that that was nasty. Yeah, if you uh if you tap one up against the container, it's gonna start it spinning and, and again you don't have any kind of rotation controls, which uh I've always questioned whether the rotation controls in, in construction sim are actually there on a uh on a crane and I don't think they are I think to manipulate your load typically you would have a spotter on the ground and some guys with some ropes and uh, they would uh, they would guide the load with the ropes not the operator of the crane with a button to rotate it I could be wrong on that just don't know All right, so we'll let that swing in and do its thing. We'll go ahead and bring it down a bit. If we can get hooked up again here. I'm imagining I'm probably a bit shallow on this. It looks like I am. So I'm gonna come over a little bit, raise my hook up and lower the boom. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm like a pro. All right, raise it. And we'll go ahead and raise the load up. All right, now we'll swing back to the left. And we'll see if we can get this guy in in somewhat of a more professional manner. Without smacking all the other containers around. I'm thinking probably if you do this right, if you don't hit the other containers or anything else like that, they probably come over pretty much in position to line up with the, the least amount of need to bang, I, I would say. Because you're really not going to in real life, you're not going to lay them up against one another uh, like that in order to get them into position. Just not happening because, yeah, you'd run the risk of tumping one over. And they also don't come flying down at this speed. You've got a, you got a gearing on the winch that would keep the load from just coming flying down like so. Got to wait for the sway. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the boom a little bit, bring that load a little bit more towards me before I come down, because I don't think I had clearance. I have it now. All right, so I'm going to get it almost to the deck, and then I'm going to come back to the left. That should get the rear end to spin on around. And start going into place. At the same time, I'm going to raise up and lower the boom to start trying to get some depth or to get the load pushed away from me and more into space. There it goes. It's starting to turn for me. On in. Get quite a bit. I'm only about halfway in there. Oh, it's so noisy. Oh, I'm pretty close. One more lift and drop, and we should. Get the disconnect. There it is. All right. So we're in place with that container. All right. Oh, hitting the wrong buttons here. Hitting the wrong button. Let's raise that back up. You got to be high, high and mighty. even higher than we were before because these containers are a bit closer to us. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, get around here. Rotating around. Start bringing that hook down. I'm almost spot on there. Wow, I almost got that perfect. Still swaying though a little bit to the right, so it's got to come back left. And probably need a little boom up. That's probably about right. Drop the hook. 
and wait for it to connect. Oh, come on. Come on. Dude, that looks so right on the hook cam. But in here, it looks so wrong. I mean, that looks like that ought to hook right on up right there. Hmm. Check the hook cam again. Nope, this time we're way past it. Hmm. I guess you gotta really wait for that sway. Gotta play that sway. There we go. I got a little cocky there. Started talking about how good I was, and the game said, Ho ho, le, no, no, not so fast, sir, we'll see. All right. Coming round, coming left. Give a little elevation. Bringing it around, bringing it around. All right. So yeah, I'm curious to see you guys' opinions of this game. I know we've got a lot of critiques of the game on the last video. Uh, part of it being about realism. Um, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. There's no asphalt road in the world that's going to hold 300 tons of silicone ore. It's not going to happen. 300 tons of any ore is not going to be contained uh, on, a, on a road. It's the reason, that, like I was saying, most roads are, you know, made out of dirt, crushed stone. They're wet down periodically so the dust doesn't kick up. And, um, yeah. There aren't paved roads on mining sites, typically. So, that part of it, not quite right. But, I mean, the whole point of it is, again, it's just about, you know... Getting to play with some somewhat accurate models of uh, really big equipment. And as far as the gameplay goes, the gameplay is fun. And, uh, and I think at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Is it fun to play? Um, yeah, it is fun to play. My only question is, how much do you have to do... Once you do the uh, the jobs that they have laid out in the in the game, which there are quite a bit of them, um, I have to say I've looked at the number of jobs, and there is about uh, thirty missions, maybe I think I've seen. I'll have to go through and count of them, but can give you guys an accurate number. But uh, there's quite a few missions that you have to do uh, in the game, and. Um, Maybe 30 is a bit much, uh, but I'll have to go back and like I said, I'll go through and count them up and then give you guys an accurate count on how many missions are in the game. But there's quite a few and there's several different vehicles that you have to operate. I do believe the number is seven or eight. I think I counted eight vehicles um, in the... Um, in the video, so. All right, so we'll bring that hook down. But it seems like that's really, really far out, but. 
It can't be too far. But boy, yeah, that does seem like it's really far. Let's get that baby airborne. I will be ready to finish up this mission. Get this last box in place. And it'll be beer 30 and we can go home for the day. Because this is the end of the day job. Moving the containers. So, yeah. We'd be ready to blow that 5 o'clock whistle. Head home for the day. Go get the dust off ourselves. Why do we have to park this thing after we finish up? Didn't even think about that. I doubt it. Probably once we get the last container in place, job's over. Get it in there. Come to work this a little bit. Here we go. Drop her down like a soul. Drop that boom a little bit. We'll have to raise up and drop the boom a little bit. Aha, we're in and done. Now that is my kind of order. Moving the silicone load should proceed accordingly. Nice. All right. And mission completed. And some cheesy guitar music. And that's going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Giant Machines 2017. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of the game. Um... Overall, though, I will say it is entertaining. I do have fun playing it, even though the modeling is not perfect and you don't have uh, that great of controls with it. And, uh, you know, it's not like you're clicking a whole bunch of buttons in there and doing stuff, but it's still fun. And I think at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. So leave your comments for me. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you want to see some more, make sure you let me know. Until then. Stay safe, have yourself a great, wonderful day, and I will see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And, of course, I am trying to get to 1,000 followers on Google+, Plus, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.